Auburn, a place known by many people in the College of Ag, but not many else in the university. We will be interviewing Dr. Noble and Mr. Pete Bernay. Today we are going to take a tour of the North Carolina a and State University Farm, which is well known for other majors, but you might not know that much, so we're going to teach you a little bit. Let's go. Speak with Mr. Pete Bernay, research specialist at the University of Florida. Hey, Nice to meet you. Um, my first question for you today is um, so, when was the farm created? The University Farm was first established in the early 1900s, probably about 1904 on AT's campus. It uh, was located where now sits the Harrison Auditorium and stretched over to where Noble Hall now sits. The farm was only about eight acres in size. After several years, the farm was relocated to where it sits Laurel Art, where it now is, where it's T, IG, what's the name of the company? Uh, IGT no. or something? Laurel Art. The tobacco company. Yeah, yeah. so another company that okay. brought them out. Okay. And after, that's on the corner of English and Market Street. And after a few years, it was re, there was 100 acres at that time. And uh, probably around 52 or 53, the farm was relocated to its now present location, which is 3136 McConnell Road. And uh, it was around about 567 acres up until 2009. 2009, we donated about 75 acres of land on Lee Street to. You, well, we didn't donate to the UNCG. It was uh, uh, cooperating with us with UNCG and ANT with the Nano Science Development okay. uh, Gateway Center. Yeah. We donated 75 acres of land. At that time, it was our biggest hay producing field. So they. They had to uh, reciprocate us for some hay until we got squared away. The farm is currently now 492 acres. 492. That's that's a lot of acres. That's that's quite a bit. And, um, my next question is: so um, we saw the animal side, but what else makes up the farm other than animals? We got a uh, environmental studies lab area that deals with uh, agronomy and soil science. Uh, they. Uh, you know, research the soil, see what type of soil we got, and then we got the, a field crop demonstration area across from the farm where we grow our uh, soybeans, wheat, and hay, and we got different professors on USDA grants that are doing di different types of uh, high-raised bed studies with different type of vegetables and fruits and that type of thing. We have a big uh, tomato uh, operation over there. We have uh, uh, what you call these high tunnel uh, buildings over there where we're doing the we show uh, our f visitors which are the sustain uh, small farmers but we really kind of specialize in sustainable agriculture what we do is provide not only local farmers but throughout the state where they come and to a site that where a uh, small farmer can get some ideas about if you want to do a one bull herd or a small goat herd or a small pasture-based poultry unit. And if you want to do some vegetables, you can do a raised bed study with black plastic and put up some small greenhouses, high tunnels are what they call them, mm -hmm. where a farmer can uh, go to the uh, farmer's market early in the year and late in the end of the year. So that's, that's the kind of thing we show our farmer visitors that came by, most of the minority farmers to come see the type of ideas they can get from us. Okay. Um, my next question is, who all works on the farm? We've got quite a few different coordinators. Uh, Mr. Moses is the farm superintendent. Then we've got an assistant superintendent, field crop uh, coordinator, a small room uh, animal uh, coordinator. I'm the beef cattle coordinator, poultry coordinator, dairy coordinator, swine unit coordinator, and then we've got field crop studies 
technicians that work there. So we got probably around about 20 different people that you know working on the farm permanently. Okay. Other than the people that work here, who can use the farm? Our students are the most beneficiary users of the farm. This is really a research farm, uh, field demonstration farm, and uh, it's a farm that our uh, students use. Plus, it's a working farm. We raise different you know crops and stuff like that. But our students are the main beneficiary, and we are trying to do some outreach programs with different neighborhoods to try to get uh, some small uh, garden areas set up, that type of thing. So, and plus, you know. That's, I guess, an outreach program along with our cooperative sense agents mm -hmm. uh, on campus and at uh, on LinkedIn Greensboro. Okay. Um, my next question is, how has the farm changed and evolved over the years? Well, I've been here for about 40 plus years. When I started, it was uh, located right here. I'm a graduate of A&T State University. I've sent two doors to A&T. So when I first started, I was on a research project uh, with Dr. Seagerson dealing with a twinning project with beef cows and as he progressed through that we also done a project dealing with uh, sheep that's called MEO suppressing protein study he was doing a project with that so when he finally ran out of a, well he didn't run out of grant money he decided you know to go a different direction I was a sore by the farm as a, general, uh, a regular farm employee so through that time we have uh, you know picked up some more modern equipment done you know uh, develop more modern techniques for farming, raising our beef cows, and it goes back to our overall objective to be a sustainable agriculture mm, pro, uh, program uh, minority farmers and other small farmers can come and you know get different ideas. So we're doing you know, more outreach to our uh, neighborhood communities and our local farmers. That, that's really what we have involved with right now. And my, my last question um, is, so why is the farm successful? Guys like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's successful because we have the uh, right leadership in, uh, in our farm superintendent and our professor like Dr. Noble interjecting different ideas. And it's an A&T based farm. You know, we're proud, you know, I'm an A&T graduate. Are you proud? That's the, that's the main thing. We do it in an aggy fashion. That's how we want to keep it done. Hopefully our next year be that we can show people that we can do things, you know, uh, according to plan and, and make it very uh, profitable. You know, we, we know how to do some different things too. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs> Aggie Pratt. I'm Dr. Ralph Noble, Chairman of the Department of Animal Sciences here at North Carolina A&T State University. All right, can you tell us a little bit about the farm? The farm is, is a very important uh, resource. It's a, considered for those in animal sciences as the largest lab on campus. And here we have about seven animal species, six animal units that are tied to our courses, our teaching, our research, and really exponential skills that students learn by the time they graduate. Nice, nice. About how close would you say that the farm is to A&T? About two miles from Webb Hall, the corner of the campus. So Thank we're on the very end of the campus, the uh, Market Street and uh, Bimbo. It's about a little less than two weeks to get two miles to get out of here. Okay. okay, what's your favorite thing about the farm? How easy the animals are to work with and be able to get students who've never been around animals so close to them. The more likely you'll be involved. You don't want them biting up a dog, horses trying to kick you, then you're scared of them. These animals are all very passive. Otherwise, they won't stay here. So part of the reason for them being is other than production, other than being tied to a skill, they must not be a threat to humans and students who don't know what they're doing coming into the farm. Do you think a lot of students enjoy the farm? Those will get a chance to know where it is. So more animal science than I would say anybody else on campus is those who get involved with the farm. Mm -hmm. We have about 25 courses. 20 courses come out to the farm. And next we're going to talk to Xavier Urie. How you doing today? How you doing today? Hey, hi. Um, well, my name is Xavier Urie. I'm an animal science prefect for president for 2016 to 2017. Um, I'm a lab animal science student and I'm a sophomore. Hello, Xavier. Um, my first question for you today is, what, why is the college farm important? It's important to our students because of the fact that it allows for students to have the opportunity just for an animal science major that's not um, often given to other um, students in other universities. This allows for students to get hands-on interaction if they want to go to vet school, they want to go to other graduate programs. It also um, 
has brought me to the point to the school as a whole. It allows for us to um, basically provide food, you know, a little bit of nice delicious food for the whole university. Thank you, sir. Uh, no problem. My question is, how is the farm important to HBCUs? Um, the farm is important to HBCUs because back in the old times, um, agriculture used to be a major necessity. So it meant that um, African Americans especially had to um, go out to the farm and provide for their families. Nowadays, um, agriculture is still a necessity, but it's not always required. So for people that actually want to um, have, have the opportunity um, at HBCUs to go to the farm, they, um, they, they actually want to pursue something greater. They actually want to help, help and make a difference in the world. Well, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. The University Farm is a place like no other in history. The University Farm is an integral part of animal science majors and in the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. So next time when you stop by the farm, you'll just be able to see how legendary it is. <laughs>